in one of the world's driest deserts. There are vast lakes. In the maze of arid mountains and valleys, life's natural rhythm thrives. At the edge of a sprawling urban center, a preserve of land and water endures. This land and these people are in a constant balancing act where the needs of nature and modern life play out every day. Where life in the desert is revealed. The southwest corner of the United States is a patchwork of deserts. To discover Lake Mead, the largest man-made lake in North America, is surreal and alluring. This unusual landscape is defined by the region's main water source, the Colorado River. Dams now tame and control this once wild river. Two lakes, Mead and Mojave, flood 200 miles of the ancient riverbed with trillions of gallons of water and lie at the heart of Lake Mead National Recreation Area. Preserving 1.5 million acres of land and water it is the nation's oldest and largest national recreation area, set aside as a natural remedy to the pressures of the modern world. Today, over seven million visitors a year flock to the recreation area. For seven million individual reasons. I live here in Las Vegas, and I have a day job in a law library. <laughs> and the thing that keeps me sane is hiking and spending time outdoors in the wilderness areas. I get all my gear together, throw it all in a backpack, and get away from all the craziness of the city. Cycling has been something that I've done ever since I was a little kid. After a stressful week, you need to unwind. Lake Mead is one of the best areas to cycle in. I've been here for 40 years. My first thought was, why is there water out in this area? You come out of Boulder City and you come down that hill and the whole lake just opens up. Our family's always been water people. That's why we, we moved out here. I am from Irvine, California. I love coming out here. It's just an escape for me and my family. I am a full-blooded Mojave Indian. I am of the Quineath clan. This is the place in which we come from, the mountain of the Mojave people. This is where creation story begin. This is home.
At first glance, the home-like features of the park's deserts are not readily apparent. Extreme hot and cold conditions and the raw rocky landscape can conceal the way plants and animals have made this place home. Water is essential to all life. But rain here is rare. Where water and resources accumulate, life can be found. In washes where water is more frequent, next to boulders where shelter from the wind and sun is available. Plants seek water from every available source and produce an abundance of seeds to ensure the survival of their species. Animals survive in this desert by taking advantage of the landscape and the limited resources. They've adapted to live in this harsh environment, and some can even live without water for weeks. All living things are part of an interdependent web. Harvester ants survive on the seeds the plants produce. These ants forage far and wide to find seeds. They carry them back to their highly organized colony to be cached underground. As the seed germinates, the ants remove them to the fertile anthill. This creates new plant communities, which produce more seeds. All of these seeds help to keep the desert's rodent population abundant. An abundant rodent population keeps the rarely seen Mojave rattlesnake well fed. This simple example is repeated, evolving and changing on every mountain and in every valley for every species and every plant in every corner of the landscape. This is a place in which only us knew how to survive in it. I am a descendant of some people. And we look at the trees, I see a medicine plant. I see something to eat. I see the mountain, I see the rocks that could be used to make shelter. We come here just to think about how hard it was for them. You know, our way of life is a lot simpler. This is a spiritual place for us. place has proven to be irresistible. You come home from a hard day's work and look at the lake, all the pressures come off the shoulders, you can relax. To me, this is my escape, and all my friends that come out here also enjoy that. Whether you boat, scuba dive, water ski, it's got a little bit of everything for everybody. There's just so many things that kind of stimulate the mind here that really, really draws you to Lake Mead.
watching the waves, just taking in the scenery is what makes this place wonderful. You can go into the canyons in here in a boat and float for hours and never hear anything. Nothing else can get to you. It's, it's almost like you step back in time. I look over that mountain over there, Sunrise Mountain, and uh, there is a nice blue water out there, and uh, that's kind of my escape. Mentally, it's just a release to have fun, to pursue a joy of the outdoors. For me, it's getting out to the remote wilderness areas. I pick a place, head into it, and just explore. But as I walk, all the things like my job and the city and all that just sort of melts away. There's so much out there. It's just a very quiet place. Get from home, go through town, all the way to Lake Mead. I find myself having such a clear mind when I'm riding. You really only have yourself and your effort to think about when you're working that hard in that type of an environment. The desert environment can seem dry and static. But when summer is at its hottest, the atmosphere boils with the potential of rains from the summer monsoons. These clouds mostly tease the parched landscape with water. When the rain does fall, it can dump an entire year's worth of rain in one area in just a few minutes. Most of the water runs off into the hot, thirsty desert. The earth trying to capture every precious drop. Water is the source of life for everything. It runs in all our veins. It has no discrimination about anybody. It simply does its job and moves on. The water held in these lakes is controlled and spoken for. The lives of over 20 million people have been built around this water. The arid lands of Southern California and Arizona have become a leading food producer with this water. The cities of the Southwest power themselves with this water. population, 
over commitment of the lake's water, long drought cycles that may become more common with the changing climate, all show the tenuous nature of this lifeline. The ability of these lakes to provide water reminds us that we too are part of the desert system. As part of this desert, we live by the same rules, balance, and rhythm that drives all life here. are intertwined with this natural order. By returning to this desert, we find our own balance. When the casting stroke and performing right, it is complete harmony with all things on this planet. <laughs> As soon as you feel that life on the other end of your line, it seems like that's everything that you're chasing. And just truly be at your most relaxed state. And you realize what is important to you. I just feel that sense of peace. I find myself having such a clear mind. I really treasure those times. I feel regenerated. Uh, the views, waiting for the light to change, looking out over the other peaks and over the desert terrain is just amazing. It's like a quiet sanctuary. My religion, which is the Mojave religion, is where I'm sitting now, next to my mountain, which my creator resides. It's a religious site to the native people. The ability of the land and water of Lake Mead National Recreation Area to renew our lives endures. The desert's potential to inspire is endless. The power of the water is essential. And the promise of escape awaits. That lake is there doing its magic for all of us in so many different ways. <laughs>